Shalom Aleichem, dear friends. With your permission, I would like to offer several thoughts of mine regarding the Haftarah of past Shabbat, regarding Shabbat Nachamu, you know, which is behind us. We call it Shabbat Nachamu. Why? Because we, we, will, we read the Haftarah beginning with the words Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, saying, Comfort me, comfort me, my people. And of course, the question is number one, why do we call the Shabbat Shabbat Nachamu? There are three Shabbatot during the whole year. In the whole year, we have 54 parashiot for each Shabbat, right? One for each Shabbat. And three of all these 54 are named according to the Haftarah. The first one, of course, is the Shabbat that, that comes before Tisha B'Av. Because we read Chazon Yeshayahu ben Amotzo Shabbat, we call it Shabbat Chazon. That's the Shabbat before Tisha B'Av. Immediately after Tisha B'Av is Shabbat Nachamu, the Shabbat of comfort. Why? Because we read parasha, the, the Haftarah of Nachamu, which begins with the words of Isaiah again, like Chazon. Chazon is the first chapter of Isaiah, whereas this is, this is uh, chapter 40. Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, Yomar Elokechem. God is calling upon us to comfort him. To comfort Hashem, to console him. Who's, who's in need of consolation? Who is in need of comfort? if not the Jewish people. The Jewish people has suffered so much. For at least 2,000 years, counting from the destruction of the Second Temple, which is, to be exact, is uh, 1,954 or 55 uh, years since our Temple, Bet HaMikdash, was destroyed. And because of that, the Jewish people has been crying over that, as it says in the book of Psalms, Al Naharot Babel, Sham Yashavnu Gambachinu Bezochrenu Etzion. Even before the, first, the second destruction, after the, 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 the first destruction, we know of the Jewish people sitting and crying over the destruction. And the same thing also, we do the same. In every Tisha B'Av, the Jewish people sit on the floor and we have lamentations that we sing, we lament, and that brings us into tremendous sadness, which is required, by the way, on the day of Tisha B'Av, and we mourn for the loss of Jerusalem in the time of Beta Migdash. And we pray all the time that God should rebuild it again. And we hope and pray that soon we will see that. Right? But in the meantime, during approximately 2,000 years, the Jewish people have suffered enormously, more. I mean, it cannot be evaluated with, feel, with normal feelings. The Jewish people suffered no end, no end at the hand of the nations. The nations hated us. Why did they hate us? Does anybody know really? We assume, we have all kinds of assumptions. There is a reason. We know what is the reason. The reason is because the Jewish people is different. And normally by nature, the law of nature is that one does not like someone who is not, who is not like him. We don't eat what they eat. We don't marry whom uh, anybody. And more and more and more. So they don't like someone who is distinguished from them. Unfortunately, we have suffered so much that we have been humiliated. We have been humbled. 
we have been uh, put in such an atrocious kind of uh, behavior, it's unbelievable. Check history. And let's say ending with the Holocaust, in which we lost six millions of our brothers. Nobody can envy us. And yet, people still hate us. The kind of hatred that cannot be explained logically. Everybody admits to that. Why do you hate the Jew? Because he is a Jew, that's all. And not only that, the Jew, wherever he, he, he lives, he brings only a blessing. I mean, even the Arabs, you go today to Morocco, they will tell you, please come back again to Morocco. Because when you left Morocco, when the Jews left Morocco, the blessing has left us, has departed from us. What I am telling you is true, because the king of Morocco, Hassan II, told me personally this. He said to me, Rabbi, please come back. Tell the Jews to come back to Morocco because when they left us, the blessing has departed from us. I remember that. And not only that, everyone who goes to Morocco today, thank God you can go to Morocco today and, and enjoy yourself there. But that's what the Arabs tell them. Every Jew that they see, they say, why, why did you leave? Come back. But the Jews of Morocco left as soon as they heard about the establishment of the, of the modern state of Israel, thinking that they are going to be appreciated. Instead, they have been humbled. But that's a different issue. It does hurt us, by the way. That's why I mention it. But the point is that what happened to us has happened to all the Jewish people in the, in, in, in the midst of all the nations. We have been humbled. And then they tried so many times to destroy us, but they did not succeed. We shall talk about that. But in the meantime, my question is, who needs to be comforted? God or us? Perhaps both. It is possible that we both, God, of course, needs to be comforted. And he calls upon us and he says, Nachamu, nachamu ami. My people comfort me. How can we comfort God? We apparently need him, need him to comfort us. But apparently we need it, yes. That I said to myself, I allowed myself to explain. Perhaps that's the reason why the word Nachamu appears twice in, such a, in a way that is not normal. Why nachamu, nachamu ammi, comfort me, comfort me. Why twice? It is possible that we are talking about two kinds of consolations. One that we owe God, that we have to comfort him. And the second is that he has to comfort us. In a different way, we can explain that he is expecting us to comfort him. How? By coming back to Judaism talking to the Jews who have abandoned Judaism. Come back, because this way you comfort God and God will be able to rebuild again the temple and Jerusalem to its great splendor from which it's left. Even though today, Baruch Hashem, it is beautiful and magnificent, but nevertheless it's not Jerusalem, the time of the temple of Beit HaMikdash. All the nations used to come to visit and to bring sacrifices to the temple of the Jewish people. Beginning with the time of King Solomon and ending, unfortunately, after Hashmonaim and Hordes and so forth. So, we need to comfort God by coming back to Him. By showing him that we don't want to reject Judaism, because by not fulfilling the observing the mitzvot, you are practically rejecting Judaism. And yet you have been circumcised. And yet you call you call yourself a Jew. You did not depart from Judaism. 
If you wanted to depart from Judaism, what do you, why didn't you go and become and take another kind of religion? The world is uh, full of religions, right? What about Christianity? What about Islam? I mean, all you have to do is to choose. If you hate so much Judaism, I'm talking about this part of the Jewish people, which is now demonstrating day after day, day after day, illogically, and pretending to say that they, that they are not believers, we don't want uh, people of Torah. And they are showing, they are demonstrating with such hatred that cannot be explained. It's unbelievable. But coming back to the issue, the issue is we need to comfort God. God is waiting for us to comfort Him. How? By coming back to Him, by doing tshuva. Yes, by repenting. How? We have to start somewhere. Somewhere. I mean, all you have to do is think, reflect upon your, the fact that you are a Jew. You have been circumcised. That already qualifies you as a Jew. And even if possibly it is possible that some people say that you come from the Erev Rav, those people who infiltrated into the camp of Israel when they left the, the land of Egypt, and they, they, they all converted. Okay, but still, there is great Judaism in you, and you still don't want to leave Judaism. So what do you want? Why are you against Judaism? This does not make any sense to me. Unfortunately, who knows what's going to happen today with this split, with this terrible dissension that is going on today. Oh my God. The only hope that we have is that God maybe will have mercy upon us and instead of punishing again this poor nation, maybe he will finally bring that redemption which we were talking about, upon which we, we lay there all our faith, all our esperance, all our hope. At the same time, we ask Hashem to comfort us. How? Don't wait for us to do Teshuvah. Redeem us. And we do believe that every day there are miracles. But those miracles are hidden miracles. It's not enough today. Today we need open miracles. Revealed miracles. So that those who do not believe in, in you, so to speak, so those, those people who have rejected the observance of the Torah should at least see something that is extraordinary and then we can talk. But right now, how can we blame those people who did not have a Jewish education, who did not have a Torah education? How much can we blame them? They don't know anything. They are, unfortunately, they are like Behemah. Oh, they can recover themselves, of course, in a, in a minute, if they want. But in the meantime, by doing this so illogical, that it, it, infuri it infuriates us in a way that's unbelievable. We don't know where is the logic here. But we are talking to the Almighty God and we say to Him, come on, send us the Redeemer already, send us the Messiah, and Eliyahu Hanavi, the prophet, perhaps then when we see something, perhaps there is something that we can tell those, this part of the Jewish people which pretends to be non-believers. So it is possible that's why we read twice the word Nachamu, Nachamu Ami. We ask him, comfort us, Hashem. And Hashem says, comfort me. I found a Midrash in the Psikta Rabbati, in chapter uh, 30, where it says the following. Amar Rabbi Berachia HaKohen, Rabbi Berachia the Kohen said, Nachamuni Nachamuni Ami, God is begging us to comfort him. How do we understand that? So the Midrash says in the Psikta, Benohak Shebaolam Adam Sheishlo Kerem. I mean, usually when someone has, he's in possession of a vineyard, and then they were 
robbers who came in and destroyed the vineyard. So the Midrash says, Lemi menachamim, la kerem or le baal kerem? Whom are you going to comfort? The vineyard itself or the owner of the, of the, vine, the, the vineyard? What is it that he is talking about? Based on the words of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 5. Kerem Hashem Tzvaot Bet Israel. The Jewish people are known as the vineyard of God. Now that vineyard has been destroyed. When the temple was destroyed with everything that, that uh, went with it up to today. The vineyard of God has been hurt very much, has been damaged. Since the time of Nebuchadnezzar, when he came to destroy the first temple, and he burned the house of God. So now the house of God has been destroyed. So we owe him to comfort him. Why? We are the vineyard, and he is the owner of the vineyard. When, the, vine, when the, vine, the vineyard is damaged, whom are you going to comfort? The vineyard itself or the owner? Absolutely, it is the, it is the, the owner. That's what makes sense. That's why Hashem says, Nachamu, Nachamu Ami. My people, please comfort me. And by the way, this uh, explains why if, if it was meant that the prophet uh, Isaiah meant to say, that Nachamu Nachamu Ami it means that the Jewish people needs to be comforted, which is true. But the words here apparently should have been not Nachamu in the imperative. It should be saying Hit Nachamu Ami. If what was meant is that the people of Israel are to be comforted, then it should have been saying, Be comforted, my people. Right? Instead it says, Nachamud, in the imperative, comfort me. So, the, the words of the Midrash are definitely logical. And I found a proof to that from the, the, the Talmud in Masechet Berachot on page 3, where it says that the night, Rabbi Eliezer said, that the night is divided in three parts. There are three sections in every night. In each one of, each one of them is four hours. The whole night is made up of 12 hours. That's a long story. If you divide it in three parts, you have every part has a different kind of nature. One day we spoke about it. But the Talmud says that in each one of these uh, four hours, God is screaming like a lion. And he's crying over the fact that he had to destroy his house. So he is crying. For all this generation, he's crying and, and screaming. Wow, woe to the day when I had to destroy my house. And I had to take my nation to be dispersed all over the nations. Unbelievable that God himself is talking this way, which means it had to be done. Many times they ask questions. Why is it that we have that the Jewish people has to suffer so much? The fact that we have to suffer so much, the real answer is only in the hands of God. But there is one thing that everyone, everyone will have to admit. We are still alive. The Jewish nation, nation is still existing in the world. All the nations are perplexed when it comes to this issue. How come the Jewish people are still here today? There is not one generation in which the nation, some of, some of the nations came against the Jewish people trying to destroy him, to decimate him completely. They did not succeed. They did not have the power to succeed the Jewish people. Because the Jewish people is the nation of God. So why do we have to suffer? That's it. That's something that only God can explain. We can explain that because of the sins and because of many things. There's one thing that we can say. It's also the Kabbalists say it's because of the sin of Adam and Chava. 
and the, the snake who came. But all this is a great parable. Who knows what it means? So one thing is definitely sure. What it says in the parasha Vayet Hanan that we read just past Shabbat. And it says there, You, my people, who have stayed with God, you are alive today. Are we alive or not? Yes, not only the Jewish nation is alive. Yeah, maybe the majority of the Jewish people is still dispersed all over the world. But still, the Jews who are in the land of Israel are about half the population, the Jewish population in the world. We are here, back again, in the Jewish nation, the Jewish, the, 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 the great Jewish a, a country that God has given us that the Torah repeats again and again the land that I have given you the land that I have given you how many, maybe 50 times the Torah has repeated that and if a person ponders upon every stone of Yerushalayim or any place in Israel if you know how to ponder how to, 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 to look at something with depth you will realize that it's not just any, st any, any stone. It is a stone that is, in fact, it's a, it's a heart. I'm saying it because that's what, it, that's what was said by one of the poets of Israel. That the stones of Jerusalem are, the st are stones that are, in fact, almost human, are made of flesh and blood. Of course, in the figurative sense, I'm, I'm talking about that. But the point is that we have to understand and to thank Hashem that we are still in existence. This definitely proves something. You don't think it is enough for us to at least review again the history of the Jewish people and to see what was that that made the Jewish people exist until today. Anybody with the proper common sense would know that it is the Torah that we have kept. The study of the Torah. Those people who study the Torah, they are the ones who, who gave us the possibility to see the Jewish people still alive today. Chaim Kulechem Ayom. Unfortunately, there is still a need of Kulechem. Kulechem means all of you. Which means that God does not give up on any part of the Jewish people. Religious or not, God wants every part, every Jew to come back to him and to stick to him. It will be. I believe it will be. As the Rambam has promised. The Rambam says in the laws of Teshuvah, he says, in chapter 5, he says that everyone is going to do Teshuvah. When we see the situation today, so alarming, it's very hard to even think for, for a minute that people, these people are going to do Teshuvah. I say, I believe in the words of the Rambam, and I feel it. People are going to do Teshuvah. The world is going to change soon. I'm saying this with total certitude. And the change will involve the repentance of all the Jews in the world. It's very hard to think how it's going to be, but it's going to happen. Because we have to come back to our kind of understanding. And if we have any kind of understanding, we have to admit that if it was not for the Torah, that the Jews kept studying from one generation to another, from the time of the destruction of the temple till the time of the ghettos in Germany and everywhere. We have studied that Talmud, the Torah, that kept us alive. And even those Jews who renegade and they betray the Torah by not going after it, they are also existing because of that Torah. Therefore, 
What a mistake it is to go and hate the people who learn Torah. If you knew the importance of the study of Torah, you would invite everyone to go to study Torah. Of course, the question is who's going to serve in the army of Israel? Don't worry, there will always be people who serve in the, in the army of Israel. But we believe also that the army of Israel will become stronger and stronger, the more Torah, the more strength. And what a catastrophe can be, can falling upon the Jews, the Jewish people, wherever they are, if that part of the Jewish nation will go against the people who learn Torah. What a pity, what a pity. Let me just conclude by saying, remember a few days ago, a few weeks ago, when there were one of the, those terrible demonstrations that are so illogical. Demonstrations against what? Against anything that is logical. But one of them is hating those people who study Torah, hating the city of Nebrak, hating any Jewish religious uh, place. Why? I cannot help it but saying that if there is that much hatred, it means that something is bothering them. Because logically talking, it's impossible. Why, why would you hate them? What did they do against you? Yes, they, didn't, they don't go to the army. Number one, many of them go to the army. But those who do not go to the army, we need them. We need their studies. What, what do you want to do with them in the army? What would they do in the army? Baruch Hashem, thank God, we have a formidable army. Our army of Israel today is marvelous. Leave it as it is. Don't spoil everything. If you take even part of them to the army, we are going to lose many things. We will suffer. There is only one thing that will rescue us forever. That is the study of Torah. This has been already proven beyond any doubt. We are still in existence today because those who stuck to Hashem. How? By observing the mitzvot and learning the Torah. That's why all of you are in existence because of this. Who are all of you? The religious and the non-religious. We owe the, world, the Torah world. All we have to do is to admit that something is wrong with us. It is time to start thinking. What is wrong with you? If you hate that much, it means only one thing. It means that it bothers you. And you want to know why it bothers you? Because you are a Jew. And you know that you should do it also. You should learn Torah. You should observe the mitzvot. But you don't do it. It bothers you. Because it bothers you, so it becomes hate. And you want to go and hate them. But too much hatred proves only that there is love. And soon it's going to become love. But why wait till something terrible happens? That's what I wanted to say today. And I think I will conclude with that. May Hashem bring back the Shekhinah upon us. May the Divine Presence reside with us so that we will be reunited again. And the word Kulechem, all of you, as the Kabbalists say, all the Jewish people make up one single body. And those people call themselves the rightists, the other one called them the leftists. Now tell me, the right hand does need the body, right? It is part of our body. And the left hand is also part of the same body. So... Don't you think it's part of the reasons why we should be united? It's one body. Right or left? Nobody is telling you not to be a leftist. You can be a leftist. But it does not mean that you have to be against your origin and your Judaism. Come back to Judaism because this is our salvation. Remember that. Shabbat Shalom.